Hi, this is an introduction to the C out statement in C++ and I'm using code blocks on Windows. I'm going to first go to file, new, empty file, and then I'm going to go ahead and save it, uh, do a file save as, and I'm going to name it doesn't matter too much what you name it, but except for the extension needs to be .cpp. Okay, and so now that the file is named, CodeBlocks knows you're working on C++. So I'm going to start a basic program with pound include io stream, and the io stream library contains the C out and the C in functions. And then I'm going to use the namespace standard. And now here's for my main program. And the opening and closing brace. And remember, everything should be tabbed over when you're in between an opening and closing brace. So the basic C out statement stands for console out. So it will output to the console. So it just outputs text. And it's a function, but I'm going to use it with a redirect. The redirect will be two less than signs. And so I'm just going to output hello world like that. And whatever you out when you're outputting a text, you'll need to put it inside of the quotations and then make sure you end that line in a semicolon. And so now I'm going to do the compile and run right here. And so now it opens up my command prompt and outputs hello world. This other stuff, process returned, uh, that was code blocks put that in there for you. And then it also put a, did a little pause here, press any key to continue so that otherwise it would just disappear real quick. So this keeps it open. Okay, so now, uh, if we put a, a second line in here, second C out statement, uh, today is Tuesday, at least it's Tuesday for me, I don't know what day you're watching it. And so now if I run it, you'll notice that it put both of those on the same line. Okay, so just because you have a second C out statement, that doesn't mean they skip to a new line. So that's why we have a new line. Okay, anytime you have a backslash, in fact, let me just, uh, uh, if I just put a backslash by itself in here, notice what happens. When I do the compile, I'm going to get an error message right here. It points to this line that has the error message. Okay, a backslash is actually an escape character and it expects something to follow it. Okay, so uh, the backslash in is one of the most common escape characters. And so the backslash in means go to a new line. So this will actually skip the line. So now when I compile and run it, then, or that just compiles it. Now when I run it, uh, it prints out hello world and then it skips to the next line because of the backslash in and on the next line today is Tuesday. So I usually, if I'm printing out text, I'm kind of used to just go ahead and putting a backslash in at the end of each line to print it out. Okay, so now let's, so this is how we print out text. Oh, and also you could put backslash in inside the middle right here. Make sure it must go within the quotations though. So notice that this will build and run hello, then it's new line world, then new line, then today is Tuesday. Okay, so those are the backslash. Now another one, another escape character is a backslash T. And so that means tab. So it does a horizontal tab. So here you can see what it does. Hello, then the tab and world. Now getting them all, if you have a bunch of lines with uh, with tabs in them, they don't always line up like you would like them to. So I don't use it that often. Um, there is a backslash A that actually just sounds a, a little alert on your computer. And then 
Okay, so if you want to actually print a backslash, then you need to actually put two backslashes in there. So say I want uh, to do a backslash between hello and world, you need to do two backslashes, which means escape and then a backslash. So here is hello backslash world. Now also, if you want to do a quotation, since quotations are used to contain the text that you output, let's say I wanted to put the word uh, is within quotations. Well, since uh, then we need to do a backslash quotation. So if I'm within the quotations here, you'll need to do a backslash quotation to actually print a quotation. Okay, so now the word uh, is will be inside of quotations. So today is Tuesday. Okay, so I'm going to take that back out for now. Okay, so here's how we can print out text and do new lines and some of the escape characters that we can use. So the next thing we're going to look at is outputting variables. Okay, so I'm going to first declare a variable. I'll just name it A and assign it a value of 10. So I declared an integer variable. I named it A and it made it equal to 10. So now we can just output A just like that and that will output the value of the variable without quotations. If you put quotations around A, then it would literally print the letter A. But without quotations, it will print the value of the variable. Okay, so here it printed out, hello world, today is Tuesday, and 10, the value of the variable A. Okay, so now let's say that you wanted to do a new line after printing that. Well, you can't put a backslash in right here because the backslash in needs to be within quotations. That would, this would give you an error, as you can see right here. So now, if you want to put a backslash in within quotations, this would still be an error. So what, what needs to happen is this either needs to be on a separate line like this, uh, which I would need a semicolon right there. And so now we can, uh, it'll output 10 and then a new line. Or if you want to put it on the same line, what you can do is extend the C out statement with another two less than signs, just like that. So whenever we switch from printing out a variable and text within quotations, you can extend it on the same line with another two less than signs. So you'll see this works just like that. Okay, now, since this is a very common thing to do, is to print out the value of a variable and then do a new line, uh, they have a, con C++ has a constant, meaning a variable that you can't change, called end L, and that's not a one, that's an L, end line. And that is equal to the backslash n. So this just, just makes it a little bit more readable. So this will still do the exact same thing. It prints out the value of the variable and then a new line. So this is a very common thing to do, is to do a new line. Okay, so now, uh, and so let's say we wanted to add some text with it. So the value is, and so now I'm adding some text. And so now to switch from printing out text to a variable, we need another two less than signs. So just remember, whenever you switch between printing out text, a variable, some math that we'll get into in a second, or an end line, then you'll need to put another two less than signs to extend that C out statement. So now what this looks like is this. It says the value is 10. Okay, so now, to me, the best practice, what I like to do is to do have one C out statement per line of output. And that's my own best practice. I'm not saying everyone does that. So that's why I personally like to extend my C out statement to print everything out that I'm wanting to print out in one line. Okay, so now let's start talking about math. Uh, so we could, 
uh, I can just print a math equation. And so there are only five math operators built into the C++ language. So I could print out two plus three. And again, if I put this in quotations, then it would literally print out two plus three. In fact, I'll do it over here. I can say two plus three is equal to. So it will literally print out two plus three equals. And then I'm extending the C out and I'm printing out two plus three without the quotation. So now it will evaluate this and print out two plus three is equal to five. So it evaluates the two plus three since it didn't have the quotations. Okay, so that's one operator. Another operator is the multiplication, which we use the asterisk. So this prints out two times three is equal to six. Another operator is uh, divide, uh, 12 divided by three. 12 divided by 3. We use a forward slash for division, not a backslash, a forward slash. And so 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. Oops. And then, of course, the minus sign, 12 minus 3. 12 minus 3, just like that. And so 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. Okay, so now, uh, first thing is, let's go back to division. Uh, let's go 3 divided by 2. 3 divided by 2. Okay, so this is not going to give you the answer you're thinking. You're probably thinking we'll get 1.5 or 1 and a half. But what happens in C++ is that when we divide an integer by an integer, it gives you your result as an integer. So it cuts off or truncates everything past the decimal point. So three divided by two is just going to say one right here. So don't forget that. Okay, so now though, if you want to convert these into a floating point number, just add a decimal point to the numerator. Either the numerator or the denominator will work. I like to do both of them. Okay, so now we're dividing a floating point by another floating point. And so now we've got a number with a decimal point so it doesn't truncate or cut off the number right here. Okay, so another thing to remember when you're printing out math. Um, okay, so now let's talk about, I'm gonna get rid of this text for right now. Let's talk about order of operations. Most programming, oh wait, I forgot, before we do that, I forgot the last mathematical operator. Let's do 20 mod, oops, percent sign 6. Mod, M-O-D, is short for modulus. So what that does is give you the remainder in a division. So 6 will go into 20 three times, and the remainder is 2. So this will print out the number 2 right here. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do 50 mod, um, let's do 50 mod 12. Uh, now let's just do 11. Okay, so 11 will go into 50 four times. 11 times four is 44. So the remainder is six. So the modulus will give us six right there. Okay. Uh, so now let's talk about order of operations. Most computer programming languages will follow the order of operations, which means multiplication and division will happen before an addition and subtraction. So if I do three plus five times times two. Oh, and by the way, you don't, I've been putting spaces in between here. You don't not have to have spaces right there. Okay, so what this will do is we do the uh, multiplication and division first. So it's going to multiply five times two first, which is 10, then add three to it. So it should give us 13 right here. Whereas if it didn't follow the order of oper operations, just went to left to right, you'd do three plus five first, which is eight times two, which would give you 16. 
Okay, and so, but then, of course, you can add parentheses, just like that. Um, so now the parentheses will override the uh, multiplication. And so now we've got 3 plus 5 first, which is 8 times 2, which will give us 16. Okay, and again, spaces don't matter. If you put spaces in there, then that's okay. Whatever you think looks best. Uh, in fact, what that comes down to is they usually, they call it white space, you know, when you put spaces, which also includes line returns. So, and so white space is ignored by the, by the compiler. So wherever you would add a space, you can add multiple spaces. Now, I wouldn't do this. That, I don't think that looks very readable right there. But it is ignored by the compiler, is white space. Okay, so now, and of course, if we're outputting variables, we can add mathematics in with our variable. Uh, so we could do output uh, a times 2. So this will output the number 20 right there. Okay, and I think that is about it for the C out statement.